Let's take a look at the decks that are winning outside of Japan now. We've had our Twilight Masquerade tournament. NAIC was yesterday, finished yesterday. Do yourself a favor. If you've not already seen it, go and watch it. There were some great matches. The final was incredible. The top four was amazing. There were some really pivotal moments in both. It was just a really high level of contest in general. So I'd go say watch through both days of uh, both days of streams if you want to see the decks in action. However, in this one, we're going to be taking a look at the data. So we're going to look at what the most popular decks were, what the best decks were, and who was playing what, and just sort of give a breakdown of the event so you have some idea what to expect heading into tournaments as they reopen in July and the new season begins. So first things first, we should probably start with a day one analysis. So let's take a look at what was actually played. The amount of Lugia decks are insane. Just jumping back to my tier list, I did think Lugia was going to be the most popular with Gardevoir taken at home, which was almost true, uh, but not quite. Few things to note, the amount of Lugia decks is, yeah, absolutely insane. Raging Bolt not too far behind. So if you're planning for a tournament, these are two of the more popular decks. So expect these. These are going to be the ones people are playing. God of War, obviously, if you've not seen, top eight was absolutely covered in them. There was six out of eight decks of God of War. So that's obviously a deck you need to prepare for with 14% uh, just slightly behind Rage of Mort as well. It's one that you need to be aware of. Less so, but still more important is Lost Box. 240 decks is nothing to... Uh, Nothing to ignore, that is still a massive share of uh, the meta game, and it's going to be very popular, obviously, being powerful into God of War. Lost Box did win, though, so it is going to have the target on its back. This episode is, however, sponsored by Vault X. Vault X is the only company I trust protecting my cards. First off, you start with the sleeves. That's the first line of defense to protect your cards as you pull them. Organize them into their binders. I prefer the zip ones. There's some nine sleeve 12s. There's a ton of different options different colors and they're even themed around the pokemon sets as they're released if you're a player like me they also do deck boxes able to transport your deck to events safely they really do cover everything you need for the game card sleeves binders deck boxes accessories if you want to support the channel you can use the link below or use the code woody wreck to get a discount on your purchase this will also give you 10 percent off so hopefully it's a help to you anyone that decides to use it a massive thank you but let's get into the video we will take a look at some deck lists for all of these however the other thing i think is worth noting because a lot i've seen a lot of people online saying like dragapult's dead it didn't really do anything nobody really played it whatever reason they split dragapult ex and lost zone dragapult they're all dragapult decks they're all trying to do the same thing obviously more people played this one but if we add together like let me just pull in the other graphic so this is the other if you take a look there's another 120 dragapult decks add that together there's more dragapult at this competition than there was lost box its conversion rate to the second day is also better because again they did uh they did break that into two instead of combining them so there was a lot more dragapult played there was a lot more dragapult winning that it might uh might not seem at first but uh, that does put Dragapult in fourth place for day two and day one. So it had a pretty good show in general. So if you've picked up Dragapult, don't be disheartened. It has been doing well. It's been winning. It's just not, it's not reached that top eight. It's not reached the top 16, which some people thought it might have. Myself included, honestly. The fact that we've seen so much of it and it winning and just not being able to reach it is uh, disheartening. Obviously, we can't see outside of the top eight in terms of deck lists. Like I know... Some of the top 16 and other players played Lost Box. We had Sawyer Melbourne. We had Nicholas Moffat playing Lost Box. Isaiah Bradner and his group were on Guard of War. Obviously, Tord had his Dragapult Charizard uh, concoction, which he was playing. So we know some of the decks, but we don't have the data to go through all of it. So we are going to break down the top eight. Finally, though, before we get into that, let's take a look at the day two statistics. So again, take it with a pinch of salt. There was another, I think, around... 10 15 maybe 20 dragapult ex decks so that puts it into fourth place so you get some idea of what's winning i will say that's a lot less than like the lost box or anything it's getting close to raging bolt but if you're looking at this format i think they're the five decks to look at they are the most represented they are winning the most so i think that's our undisputed top five at the moment through all of our testing god of war was absolutely the best deck in format i said it in my tier list i've said it a million times so it's nice to see that represented here. I was very disappointed in Lugia, honestly. In testing, it seemed re really powerful, but obviously you can just have those bad days with it. We didn't really see any Lugias, like... I don't think there was any in top 16 even. It was absolutely dominated by Gardevoirs and Lost Boxes. There was 
I think it was Mike Gibbs playing Maridon, which made it to 11th. So there was some variety in there. Maridon is definitely not dead. I guess if there's so many people playing Maridon, uh, Lugia maybe isn't the shout. But that's the breakdown of what was actually played. Let's take a look at some of the deck lists now. So we will start in uh, the eighth place with Andrew Gantner. Uh, he finished with a Lost Box. So, so first place was Lost Box. Eighth was Lost Box. Everything in between was Gardevoir. There are a lot of differences between the lists. So we will go through them and break them down anyway. This is a Lost Box uh, deck that came eighth. Piloted by Andrew. The interesting things in here, Iron Thorns. Uh, not something we ever tried. But obviously, really powerful against stuff like Gardevoir. Shutting off Gardevoir EX. Really powerful against stuff like Lugia. Making it not able to set up. There's so many good uses for it in this format. So I can absolutely see why it was played. Obviously, Gardevoir only runs the one boss's orders. Which is available on the early game. So if you can shut it out with this, it can be very difficult to get it moved. And just a ton of matchups this just helps shore up. I, I really do like the Iron Thorns in here. Other than that, fairly standard. We do see the Ursa Luna come in, which I think most people probably had in their list. Iron Hands. We do see Roar and Moon fall by the wayside. Obviously, if stuff like Charizard, Dragapult aren't that popular. Although Dragapult was, obviously, with stuff like Mist Energy as well. It just makes it slightly more difficult, difficult for Roar and Moon in uh, this format. I would have liked to see a Roar and Moon, but obviously, it's worked with what it's trying to do here. Uh, obviously getting 8th place, 1st place, a ton in top 16. Honestly, it has just been a battle of God of War and Lost Box. Not too, nothing too crazy. I think the only other thing worth mentioning here is the 3 Lost Vacuum. Obviously, the deck not only aims to ramp up very quickly, it tries to set up and get to that 7 on turn 2. But also, it does mean you can get rid of a ton of stuff. So against like God of Wars, you are laughing. Normally you want to get rid of your stuff to just really ramp up, but you can use it to take some uh, two-turn knockouts, maybe with a Cramorant and a Lost Vacuum. There's just so many ways to take two prizes with this deck. You've got the Greninja, you've got the Iron Hands. Yeah, this deck is uh, this deck is pretty nasty, and especially if a lot of the format is Gardevoir, Lost Box is looking better and better. In seventh place then, we've got Natalie Miller, and she played Gardevoir. I did see a few of her matches on stream. Again, top-level player, very interesting to watch. Very interesting list. It's not, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's too dissimilar to stuff most people are playing. The Enhanced Hammer is something me and my friend were talking about, obviously into stuff like Lugia, wanting to get rid of like Legacy Energy. Really helps the matchup in those cases. The Devo is really interesting. Not something I've tried, but I, had, I did see it crop up in a few God of War lists. So that could be, that could be maybe a win condition against stuff like Dragapult and Charizard. I mean, if you're spreading damage with Monkey Dory, you can get clever with it that way as well. You could potentially de-evolve some Curlia into Rolts or God of War EX into Curlia to get some easy knockouts. A spec of choice was the Reset Stamp. It was very interesting to see Reset Stamp and Aroma. No one really played Cape, which I really enjoyed and found powerful in testing. I can absolutely see why you'd play Unfair Stamp. I'm not a big fan of Aroma, but... uh. Obviously, I think in the mirror, it's maybe slightly better. The other thing worth noting is the stadium count. We do see two Artisan. We've seen Artisan, we've seen Sinnoh, we've seen Collapse Stadium. I really like Collapse to get rid of your God of War EX and other stuff, but I can absolutely see why you would go to Artisan. Obviously, a lot of your attackers can't be poffined out. Your Screamtail, your Fluttermane, your Cresselia. So I do actually really like the Artisan and that's something I'm gonna be picking up going forward. In its sixth place, we've got Henry, again on God of War. This one is very interesting. We see the two Monkey Dory. We see three Dark Energy, which there might be some matchups you do want two Monkey Dory, so I don't mind this at all. The two Monkey Dory, three Dark Energies, maybe maybe pushing it. Obviously, you've only got the seven Psychic. The one Evo as well. We do have the Aroma, so we've got a different option. I don't see a Drifloon, though, which is, which is really interesting. I would think that would be one of your main attackers. We even see the one of Irida, maybe just a really hunt down those Greninjas and Manaphy when you need them. Yeah, there's a lot of very interesting stuff in this list. We see the one Luxurious Cape. We don't see any Bravery Charm, obviously. If the Drifloon's not in here, it's not as as needed. It's nice on the Screamtail though, so. Yeah, this deck list trying to do something very different. It feels very different to all of the others. Honestly, I'd probably pick up Natalie Miller's list if I was gonna suggest a Gardevoir list to you. Uh, this is a very interesting one, but I feel it's like, it's slightly more niche and maybe very much targeted for the mirror. Not trying to hit those big numbers with a Bravery Charm and Drifloon, just uh, focusing on spreading damage, going for the Devo. You've got the two Turo, so you can just pick stuff up, play that single prize board, or reuse your Monkey Dory. 
it's a very interesting list a very unique way to play Gardevoir I don't think I actually saw this one in play but I'd, yeah I'd, I might have to go back and double check I didn't miss any games fifth place we've got Sebastian Lashmer again very interesting list we do see the two Turo again we've got the one Sinnoh in here so we've got the no art as in search out your attackers we do see the Drifloon come back in we see the Cresselia we don't see a flutter main which is interesting we've seen some lists with one some lists with two we do see a list now with zero the Klefki comes in it does something very similar but they're both for very different matchups uh Klefki shutting off stuff like Rotom Luminion really hampering those stage two decks like Dragaport and Charizard flutter main though very good trapping the active, so stopping stuff like your... If you bring their Lugia V, they can't then V-star from the active, or their Gardevoir EX, they can't then use the uh, Psychic Embrace. There's just a ton of reasons to like one for each matchup. I like one of each, honestly, but obviously list can get very tight at that point. Other than that, I think it's a fairly standard Gardevoir list. So let's move on to fourth place. Again, another Gardevoir. Again, a uh, very different version of it. We see the Fluttermane come in instead of the Klefki here. We do still see the Devo in here, which is interesting. We see the two Evo though. We see, this is much more of a st more standard list, I would say. We see the 7-2 split on energy again. I think that might be the way going forward. Again, we see the Enhanced Stammer coming in. I think it's got to mainly be for the Lugia. So Legacy Energy, ideally. Could potentially use it to get rid of like a gift so they don't draw any cards. A few different reasons to include that, I think. Does mean we can remove Mist so we can Cresselia. Yeah, there's a few little combinations. I quite like that. I, I would play Hammer over Sinnoh for sure. Obviously, playing Arvin, it's just easier to get Hammer. Easier to search it out when you need it. Third place then, you might be uh, noticing a uh, trend here is yet another Gardevoir. This one's... Quite interesting though, we do see a Tatsugiri come in. We do once again see the double monkey and double uh, dark energy. We see the 4-4 of an Iono, which I quite like. Other than that, not too dissimilar. I quite like this. I would probably switch the Tatsugiri for, I don't know what's missing. Maybe like a, no, they've got Klefki, Fluttermane. What have they cut to fit that? Oh, a Nest Ball. I'd probably, yeah, other Nest Ball just so we can find some other Pokemon. With the two artists in it might not be as important though. I'd probably still find something else to put in then. Tatsugiri, maybe like a second Turo, like a Pow Pad, so you can reuse your Turo and your boss. We do see three Vessel as well, which I, yeah, I'm not against. I think finding your energy, especially with two Monkey Dory, is going to be important. There's a lot to like about this list. Honestly, this might be the list I take and make a few changes. It's not too far from what I'm running anyway, but yeah, very interesting list. Let's take a look at the last few here then. Second place, like I say, go watch the final, is Stefan. Andrew Hedrick did take this one. If you haven't seen the final, go watch it. It's, it's incredible. Even if you, like you've heard this now and you're like, I know the result is still worth watching. Such a fascinating match. Again, fairly standard list. We do see the double Turo. We see Enhanced Hammer and Sinnoh really trying to shut down that Lugia. Lugia can be a tough matchup, so I think having a few ways to deal with it is always nice. Other than that, it's just what we've seen before. Very similar lists. I, there's not too many different ways you can go with Gardevoir. There's probably like... We do see a Roma though, which is interesting. There's probably like five cards different in most lists that you can sort of play around with and fit to your playstyle. And in this occasion, Stefan coming slightly short. I have no doubt he will be back though and competing for that top spot. But let's take a look at the top spots list then. Andrew Hedrick, absolutely monster of a season and he has done it again with uh, this lost box. Very similar to Andrew Gantner's list. If not the same, there might be a few changes. We do see the Iron Thorns come in once again. We do see, yeah, it looks fairly standard. It looks very similar. We do see the three Lost Vacuum just trying to rush that win condition. We do see four Pokestop though. Just trying to fly through this deck, get set up as quickly as possible. We see eight Switch cards. So yeah, just trying to recycle those uh, comp face, just fly through them. Just trying to hit those poker stops, see more cards, get more stuff in the lost zone and attack as early as possible. I think that's where this deck shines if it's putting the pressure on with stuff like Iron Hands. If things like Gardevoir, Lost Box, all of those are popular, then this can be an absolute counter to those. There is a chance with uh, all these vacuums and stuff and all the switch cards, the comp and the chorus that you could be tent potentially attack turn two it's just such a powerful deck it's such a quick deck the iron thorns massive against like raging bolt as well just turning off the ogre pond so they can't flood that energy into play this deck is very much designed for this meta game so we might see it shift and change as things change 
and new sets come out. Obviously, we've got Shrouded Fables just around the corner. But this is the deck to beat currently. It is the best deck in format. It fits this uh, meta game perfectly, especially with stuff like Guard War, like I said. Raging Bolt, Lugia. It's just got all the answers. And Andrew Hedrick, or Hedrick, sorry, did what he needed to do and took first place. But that's my breakdown. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it. Hopefully, it gives you some insight into the meta game as we move forward into the new season. Let me know which decks you're playing. Let me know what you were surprised about this tournament. Maybe you watched some of the matches and thought that's kind of cool. We did see uh, we did see Kamal play in, I think it was the first round. Always an interesting list. He was playing the Dragapult Lost Zone stuff. So it was good to see that in action. The one thing I was sad about was the Reggie Drago we saw. Obviously it had won a ton of games. Then it came on stream and absolutely bricked. It was gutting. I've been playing that deck and it's just so consistent. It's so fun to play. But there is the list. There are the decks that are winning, the decks that are being played. So you have some idea of what to build, what to test against for this meta game. If you made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching. That's all I've got for this one though. So I will catch you in the next one.